Oh, hello there. I'm Electric Richard, and I'm waiting for my film to finish streaming. I guess that's what I get for using 3G. But uh, but this 4G, you know, this 4G isn't isn't going to be everything it's cracked out to be. Yeah. This is the problem with 4G. You see, as 4G rolls out, I can't help but wonder: is it not a complete waste of time? Actually, no. Of course it is. You see, 4G is just another example of those big businesses, those big companies that we buy things from every day, uh, trying to force a new standard, uh, a, a new type of technology onto us. And uh, who are we to say no to them, eh? And of course, 4G is an obvious one. Yeah, it's very obvious. Everyone has a phone. Everyone likes 3G. Everyone's proven that they like downloading stuff across that 3G, from games to music to, I guess, the films. Although, who would actually download an entire film across 3G <laughs> is a bit of an idiot. Let's put it that way. <laughs> it's what the industry does. You know, it's what they do. Uh, they did it with uh, uh, DVD. From VHS to DVD, they knew that there's something good on their hands there. So, out comes DVD. Then, of course, Blu-ray or HD DVD. Let's just say Blu-ray. Uh, which didn't work as well because the next leap is digital distribution, online distribution, which um, I guess kind of breaks the flow of that theory. But there's a very good reason why online distribution has not uh, continued that trend of us being pushed a new technology and then adopting it. And that's mainly because the filmmakers don't like online distribution, uh, piracy and all that. So uh, until they catch up and realize just how much money there is to be made online, especially the TV companies. You know, you guys, you forget your embargoes from other countries. I know you have uh, territory rights and issues there that you can't just put a TV show up in one country and then, um, you know, pipe it to all the others. But get, get your head around that and you'll be making more money. Uh, same with films and uh, other things. Anyway, I'm going off topic. Uh, where was I? Ah, yes, selling us crap we don't need. The other day I was on a train in this fair United Kingdom, uh, coming down from the north of England to the south of England, or London as we call it. And uh, you know, I was bored, like a lot of people are on trains. So I thought I'll look at the internet, I'll look at my email, maybe check my Facebook, maybe tweet some funny things, because I don't, I don't tweet anything that isn't funny. And uh, so I put my phone out and had a little tap on it, and what do I find? But I've got no signal. I've got a terrible signal. There's a little circle instead of a 3G, and I, I, I don't know what's going on. You know, the Wi-Fi on the train's not working, so I've got no choice but to use the 3G. But can I get a signal? Can I monkey arse? And it occurs to me that, will 4G fix this problem? Will it fix it when I'm travelling from the north of England down to the south, going through all those other towns and not sitting still, travelling at a whopping 80 miles an hour maximum? Uh, you know, will I be able to get this data into my phone without the headache that I was experiencing that day? And this is despite my phone company saying that they have around about 97% coverage of the UK. <laughs> yeah, Vodafone. Mm. Unless, of course, there's some sort of issue with roaming, you know, while on the move. I, I say roaming, I don't mean going out of the country. I mean actually being in the country that you're paying a tariff for and, you know, you, you can't get a good signal because you're moving. Is that an issue? Is that something 4G can fix? Yeah? Yeah? And likewise, in my flat, uh, an old building built just after the war, I believe. Uh, the war being World War II. I don't know if you're watching a country that didn't have a war, but yeah, World War II, look it up. We have very thick walls. So the 3G in this building is pretty bad, actually, it's, it's pretty bad. Mm. But of course I have Wi-Fi, so who cares? I care a little bit, if I'm honest, because I pay for a 3G service and I should have it while sitting in my pants watching television on the sofa, you know? Not having to rely on this Wi-Fi and it's constantly on really fast streaming, uh, uh, you know, uh, money-saving option. Actually, that's, Wi-Fi is really good, isn't it? And with such massive, massive spread of Wi-Fi these days, again, do we need 4G? Here in the UK, the uh, mobile phone companies, a few years back when they were bidding for the 3G spectrum, spent a whopping 22.5 billion pounds on the license between them all. That's so that they could broadcast across the spectrum they were allocated for 3G. And frankly, that was a ludicrous amount of money. Ludicrous, 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 ludicrous. And it's not uncommon to hear some of these mobile phone companies complain, ooh, moan about that massive, massive cost uh, being the, the result, being the problem when it comes to poor 3G service. They spent so much money on that, they can't give you a good service now. Although it doesn't really make any sense because once the service starts, it's just, just a case of broadcasting. I don't know how that works. It's just an excuse. It's just like, it's like a baby crying because it hurt its toe or something. That's basically what you've got there, a complaining baby. 
Now, however, the uh, 4G spectrum has cost a meager 2.3 billion pounds. That's tiny in comparison to the other one. So, you know, they're all a bit happier. So they're saying, oh, we've got more money now to spend on 4G to make sure that 4G goes into your walls and into your phone while you're sitting in your pants watching television or without pants. Maybe you don't wear pants. Yeah, well, that's, up to, that's up to you. But regardless, it will beat your Wi-Fi. Yeah, completely beat it up. But then you think, well, hang on a minute. I've been paying a lot of money for a 4G service and my Wi-Fi, I'm kind of getting that, well, not for free, but it's already there. So do I really need O2's promise that they're gonna make sure that 4G gets into the homes? Hmm? And anyone watching this thinking 4G is for me, go check your Wi-Fi. Go ask your local cafe, go ask uh, your local council whether they're increasing their Wi-Fi spreadability, that it's not attached to every single lamppost on your way to work or on your way to the pub, yeah? Or your pub itself doesn't have a, a great Wi-Fi signal. Why on earth? Do you need to spend all this money on 4G when Wi-Fi is all around you, yeah, all around you? There's, there's some in this film right now, you can't see it, but there's Wi-Fi is just right now. That's how prolific it is. And even if, for whatever reason, you decide to have 4G over Wi-Fi and it is reaching into your home perfectly, and you're sitting in your pants, you're thinking, this is awesome, I love 4G. Think about the people in Wales, in the north of Scotland, in, in Doncaster, who don't have this modern communication technology, who can't get it. They're sitting in their pants watching Scottish EastEnders or Welsh Countdown, yeah? And, and they're like, oh my God, I, I don't have a good signal. This 4G rollout is a load of cuds wallop. And really, if, you know, if the companies have spent more money on say 3.5G or just making 3G better, they could concentrate on getting, you know, Ivan in his pants in Wales a good signal instead of having to force him to upgrade his contract to some ridiculous amount of money just so his bandwidth could increase this so he could try and get this great signal in his has just sort it out. Okay, I guess they are sorting it out. That's what 4G is all about. And here's another reason why it's a bad solution. The spectrum. Yeah? That all that bandwidth and space that floats around our heads, all that space we have for talking about our signals. We're running out of it. I've already mentioned this before on Electric Richard. Go and have a look. There's a, there's a nice, brilliant, fantastic video on extra credits all about it if you want to learn more. Or just Google bandwidth and, and spectrum and have a look at that. Or look at the work that Ofcom does here in the UK. It's all about the bandwidth, all about the spectrum. We are running out. Yes, we are. And so 4G might seem like a nice allocation of all that spectrum, but what about 5G and 6G, yeah? When's it going to end? It's up to you people, it's up to you and what you demand from your phone. So demand better, demand sensible. Winners use Wi-Fi. Thank you very much for watching. I have been and always shall be Electric Richard. Uh, please leave some comments. Let me know what you thought about all that stuff, what I just said about bandwidth and 3G and 4G. Are you getting 4G, are you? Are you really that stupid? Are you clever like me and use Wi-Fi? Let me know. Uh, drop me some comments, uh, leave me some tweets, and uh, or come in for a visit, have a cup of tea with me. Yeah, uh, the address is, um, are we gonna put in a, no? Okay. I'll email you the address. All right, bye.